Hi everyone, uh, today I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna just uh, describe you how to compute the basin average precipitation from graded precipitation product. Because in USA we have different types of precipitation product like uh, we have the uh, graded precipitation from next generation radar and the uh, file system is XMRG. We have North American data simulation system. We have the QPE, we have MPE. But in the last tutorial, what we have seen, we have used only one precipitation gauge for all the sub watershed, right? But this is sometimes not correct because if your the model area or your study area is very large, then you cannot use one single precipitation value or precipitation time series for all the sub watershed. For example, here. Uh, if you have uh, this type of basin and if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, this is your suborder shapes, right? So what you have to do, you have to compute the basin average for this sub basin. You have to compute one precipitation here, which is the average of this area. It is basically aerial average, right? And for here, 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 and here. So how can you compute this basin average precipitation? For this example, or for the next tutorial, I'll use NL DAS precipitation, NL DAS. It is North American land data assimilation system from the NASA's website. Uh, we have access to this server and I have an account there so I can easily download my precipitation data right so I'll show how to do that and for this case the data is basically the graded data it is like this so we have the data all over the USA or the coffee terminus USA so we have the grid system like this right the size of the grid is 0 0.125 degree by 0 0.125 degree so from this graded data system, I have to compute one precipitation here and one precipitation here. So in this case, the analysis product, we can download the hourly. We have a data for hourly basis, right? And the file format is net CDF. It is net CDF CDF network common data format it is the most popular data format because in this format you can uh, store your data in in a three-dimensional file system so it is the most effective way and you can store a multi-variable data here so one single file can contain precipitation, temperature, pressure, wind speed, humidity, specific humidity, and there are other parameters as well. So for this case, we will only extract the rainfall or precipitation data and we will process this data using GIS. So how can we compute the basin average precipitation from this net city of file format? Because, see, in this case, the grid size is in degree. So what I have to do, I have to project it in a projection system. I can use Albers conic equal area, or I can use uh, a straight plane, or I can use UTM projection system. So this uh, basically uh, depends on the requirement or the accuracy of the projection system for a certain or a particular study area, right? So I'll show you how to do that. So if I use GIS, I will use the journal statistics, right? So if I use journal statistics, so it will give you the basin average precipitation here, 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 and here, and as well as here, right? So then I'll have six different gaze points and I can make the time series for these six 
different gauges. So how can I do this? If I use GIS, it will give you only the conversion from this grid to a certain Excel file. So what do you have to do? You have to make another time series for this six location or six sub basins. So you have to use a code in, I have written the code in Python to create the time series for this. So it is uh, very efficient and it is very effective, right? So I'll also share my code uh, with you guys if you are interested basically then you can use my code to convert these things at first you have to know the uh, processings the uh, pre-processings for any model is somewhat difficult but after doing all the processes your model is ready for setup and you can run your model more easily but the main thing is that for hydrologic modeling system, the main forcing is precipitation. That's why you have to choose a precipitation product which is very, very accurate compared to other product. So in this case, I'll use with an endless precipitation, which has hourly interval. I'll use GIS software. But if you have more than 100,000 file, so for my case, I used the simulation time like uh, 15 years. So I have more than uh, 100,000 files. And if I use the GIS software, I have to click and I have to process more than 100,000 time. So it will take more than 15 years, I guess. So what I have to do, I have to make the process automatic. How can I do that? I can write some code and then I can just tell the software that do the same thing over and over but still the GIS software is not very effective so what can I do I can write basically I have already written this code in R programming language this R is very powerful programming software so I can use this code for converting the gridded precipitation into the basin address. If I have the shape file, I'll project it using the code, right? And then I'll make this six basin address precipitation. And after that, I'll use another code in Python to make time series for these six points. This is how. I'll process my basin average precipitation. But for faster processing, if you use a Windows operating system and if you are going to run your R code in Windows, still it is not so fast. It will take weeks and even it may take months also. So how can you reduce your pre-processing time? You can use the same R code in Linux machine so I'll also show you how to run your code in Linux and then it will drastically reduce your processing time. It will do the same thing, but it will take very, very short time compared to the same processing in GIS, right? So our target is to compute six basin average precipitation from gridded precipitation and the gridded precipitation is in a loss. In the future tutorial, when I'll run a gridded model, then I have to use the XMRG. It is XMRG. So this precipitation product is from NextRad, the next generation radar product. So I will use a code in BAS scripting, this BAT. CH that means the Windows has a different programming platform, right? So I can use that platform to run this code and to make this gridded precipitation into 
BSS file format because HSMS model is only compatible with this data format. That's why I had to convert my XMRG precipitation into DSS file format. And for doing that, I'll use BAS scripting. So it is also very powerful script. So it will compute the time series in a graded format and it will store all the precipitation in this data storage system that is compatible with HSMS model. Right? After doing all these things, you can calibrate your model, you can do whatever you want to do. Right? So for this case and for the next tutorial, I'm going to end my description here because the only target is to make the basin average precipitation and we can do this using GIS. First step is that we'll do the thing in GIS and after that I'll do the same thing in R and then I'll show you how to do the same thing using Linux machine. Right? Okay. So this is for today and if you have any difficulties because while doing all these steps I'll show all the methods, all the processings in detail and I'll also try to share my uh, scripts that I have already written, right? So if you are interested, then you can practice this. So I think this will be very helpful in your future life and uh, without practice, you cannot do anything, right? That's why I'm just suggesting you that you can at least follow this step because I'm going to give you all the material, all the thing you can just practice. Otherwise, if you just feel that you are trying to do a different projects and you don't have this type of precipitation, so what can you do? So for this case, let me know and what type of data you have. So just let me know, I'll give you some effective suggestion that you can do that thing, you can do this thing. Because if you know the basic processings, then you can do whatever the necessity is there, right? So I think this will not be a very big problem if you are able to do the basic thing. So, okay, so this is for today. And um, thank you for watching and let me know if you have any query or if you have any question, feel free to contact and feel free to ask any question. So thank you very much again, bye.